In this video, we go over floating point arithmetic using positive and negative numbers, addition and subtraction. So this video covers how to perform addition and subtraction on floating point binary numbers. Now it assumes quite a lot of information. You need to be comfortable with normalized floating point binary numbers from our previous videos. If you've not yet seen it, go back and watch that video first. So adding two normalized floating point numbers is actually quite straightforward. We need to one, work out where the binary point should be in each number by using the exponent. Two, line up both numbers on the normal binary number line so the binary points are in the same position. And then three, add the numbers up in the normal way following the rules of binary addition. So let's work out where the binary point should be in each number using the exponent. That's the first step. Well, the first exponent tells us to move the binary point three places to the right. A one in the two column, a one in the one column. Two plus one is three. And remember, positive exponents move the binary point to the right. The second exponent tells us to move the binary point one place to the right. So we've done step one. Step two, line up both numbers on the normal binary number line so the binary points are in the same position. Notice how we end up with a few empty columns which we simply pad with zeros. And then we add the number up in the normal way following the rules of binary addition, which we covered in a previous video. So we have zero and one is one, zero and one is one, zero and zero is zero, one and one is two, which of course is zero carry the one, zero, zero and the carry one is one, one and zero is one, and then finally zero and zero is zero, and zero and zero is of course zero. By adding up the columns with ones in, we've performed the addition shown on the screen. Okay, so let's try storing this result, which was 6.375 back as a normalized floating point binary number. That's also something you might ask to be doing the exam. Perform this calculation and store the result back in the format you started with. So we need to move the binary point so it sits between the first zero and one. So we have to move it three places to the left. Remember that as we had to move the binary point three places to the left to get it to its normalized position, we'll have to move it three places to the right to put it back in the correct position. We now have an exponent that must be plus three. Using our format of three bits for the exponent stored in two's complement, that's zero, one, one. The last stage is to store the mantissa, which is simply the number from the original number line, remembering it must start zero, one. But look, we've got a problem. We've run out of space in the mantissa and can't actually store the final two bits, the bits that are representing a quarter and an eighth. We've discovered we can't actually store the result, which was 6.375 in eight bits using this format. The closest we can get is six. Now in this situation, we have two options. We can either accept that the result of this addition can't be stored with the accuracy or precision we need given the limitation of this format or we could increase the total number of bits we're allowed to use to store the normalized floating point number. If we choose the second option we would need 10 bits in total minimum, 7 for the mantissa and 3 for the exponent. OK, let's look at another example. This time we're going to add two more normalized floating point binary numbers. They're shown on the screen now. So we work out where the binary point should be in each number. The first one says move it two places to the right. 
The second exponent tells us to move the binary point two places to the left because it's a negative exponent. Minus four and a two is minus two. Now we can't easily move the binary point off the edge of this screen visually, so we've just slid the bits across instead. It's the same effect. Step two, line both numbers up on the normal number line so the binary points are in the same position. And of course, we can backfill with any required zeros we need. And now we perform the standard binary addition using the rules. So 0 and 1 is 1, 0 and 0 is 0, 0 and 0 is 0, 1 and 0 is 1, 1 and 0 is 1, 0 and 0 is 0, 0 and 0 is 0, and 0 and 0 is 0. By adding up the columns with ones in, we've performed the calculation shown on the screen now, and we've got our answer 3.125. Okay, let's look at one last example. This time we'll perform subtraction on the two normalized floating point binary numbers shown on the screen. So again, work out where the binary point should be in each number. The first has an exponent of 2, so we've slid the binary point to two places to the right. And the second exponent tells us to move the binary point three places to the right. We now line both numbers up on the number line so that the binary points are in the same position, noticing again how we end up with a few empty columns which we can pad with zeros. Now, the easiest way to perform this subtraction is to turn the number we want to subtract into its negative version and perform normal addition. To convert the second number into its negative version, we start on the right with the least significant bit, the LSB. We copy each bit as it appears up to and including the first one. We then swap all the remaining bits zeros become ones and ones become zeros. Now we add up the numbers in the normal way following the rules of binary addition. Note how we've scrapped that middle line because of course we've converted that number into its negative format. We're just adding the other two numbers together now. So we've got zero and zero is zero, zero and zero is zero, zero and zero is zero, 1 and 1 is 0, carry the 1. 1, 1 and 1 is 3, so that's 1, 1 in binary. 1, carry the 1. 0, 0 and 1 is 1. 0 and 1 is 1. And 0 and 1 is 1. By adding up columns with the 1s in, we've performed the addition 3 plus minus 5 equals minus 2, which of course is the same as the subtraction, 3 minus 5, which is what we were originally being asked to do. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How do you perform arithmetic with floating point binary numbers?